So I guess out of school, jumped into university at, at Sydney there, did an agricultural economics degree actually. Um, from there, straight into banking was sort of the logical progression for a lot of the guys in our degree. Um, spent some time on the trading desk, uh, in business banking, uh, in group strategy. So it was a really good sort of, I guess, grounding if you like, and got a good breadth of experiences and always had a bit of a, uh, I guess, a, a bug for property though. And uh, that was sort of just slowly pulling me uh, towards it. Welcome back to the Buyers Age Institute show. I'm your host, Ben Handler. Today, we have the pleasure to be discussing and diving into John's business. He runs a business called Mayfield Property. And I remember back in the day when I was at Cohen Handler and John was a one man band and now he's built a business into five people. So I'm really excited to dive into this today with you, John. And I guess the, the skills you develop and cultivate in the corporate world, I mean, they're highly transferable. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's good to see large scale businesses and the professionalism in which they're run. So that's something I've tried to sort of bring across into the, the buyer's agent space. Um, but yeah, just the, the, the mix of people you meet, uh, the functions you're exposed to, the, the calibre of people that you're working with, um, it is good. Yeah, a really good background. It's a good opportunity I felt when I was working corporate to, to see how, what, what culture looks like, what culture you don't want to bring into a new business of yours and how you treat people, leadership. Did you learn a lot about that and how you're going to interject that into your business? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, there's some, some great things with big business, but there's also some, some downsides and challenges as well. Um, you know, larger business, it, it takes longer to implement change, to, to turn the ship around as it were. So I think with your own business, one of the advantages is you, you can be more nimble yeah. um, and you can take all those great bits out of corporate that you, you love, but leave some of the maybe you know the corporate baggage will say behind you know which is actually really good and mayfield property it's obviously been going for five years yeah. i love the name i mean it sounds quite i don't know english how did you come up with that it's actually uh my parents have a beef cattle farm in, in southern new south wales is the is the story there and, and, and mayfield i guess is the uh i guess that lo location of that property um and yeah I'm, jc property or anything like that that never really appealed um, to me. So yeah, we, we went with the name of uh, Mayfield and yeah, it seems to resonate quite well with people, which is good. Yeah, nice. And when were you first exposed to buyer's agents? Yeah, I think, um, look, I start, I remember probably it must have been about 2010 uh, reading, I think it was an article in the Fin Review about, you know, the benefits of engaging a buyer's agent. I'd never heard of it until then. Um, and at the time, I'd actually started to help some family and friends, um, whether it was bidding at auction or, you know, helping out some, you know, my folks, parents, you know, secure an investment property. And, and I actually didn't realise you could really do that as a career. So, yeah, it was relatively late in the piece, I guess, that I picked that up. And that was probably for me where the seed was planted to think, hey, this could be a possibility to turn this, I guess, sort of hobby or passion into a career. Into a career. Did you ever, when you were working corporate, think that you wanted to get into real estate, however, you didn't want to become a real estate agent, so that was a roadblock to get into real estate? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I, I always did have a passion for property, even through school. I was quite interested in design, in investment, in development. Mm. Um, but yeah, the traditional real estate sales agent role was always something I, I guess I'd thought about, but, but was never sort of, you know, grabbed me enough to want to sort of make that jump. Um, so I guess, yeah, learning sort of the, there was another avenue available in the buyer's agency space certainly probably helped pull me into the industry and, and maybe I wouldn't be here uh, if it wasn't for that option. Yeah. And so you're, you're based, obviously, your head office in Sydney. Yes. Yep, You've got yep. five staff. Correct. You're a team of five now. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, being an entrepreneur, a business owner, we, I mean, I, from my perspective, we, we, we transform a lot, like personally, professionally, self-awareness. We we go through so many stages of growth. Yes. What, what, are, what are some key things you've learned about you know, yourself along the way of your five year journey? Yeah, I think, um, well, probably becoming the father of three young boys has been a bit of a, a, a game changer. I think becoming a sort of a parent really gives you a, a, a different perspective on life and certainly helps you get a lot more uh, balanced, I guess, in terms of priorities, what's important, what isn't. Um, so that's been you know, really interesting. I think, you know, just probably just broader maturity as well. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're younger and, and you know, sort of first starting out, um, you know, you, you don't have that volume of experience sort of behind you. Mm -hmm. So I think um, just sort of the maturity, uh, you know, on the personal front, but then sort of, you know, growing out the business as well, 
that's probably been the biggest couple for me. Yeah. And what are the, I guess, two key opportunities that you feel are really, I guess, I guess beneficial for this career, I guess this path for you? As yeah, I think, look, I mean, opportunity, it's an incredibly empowering thing we get to do every day, sort of sitting in people's, you know, lounge rooms or, or kitchen tables. And invariably, it's at one of the, a key junction point in their life. You know, it might be their first home as a young couple or they're, you know, they've just had some children or about to and it's the family home or they're, they're downsizing after 40 years. Um, you know, it's an incredibly sort of, you know, um, you know, important decision, a milestone they're going through. So I think um, that's certainly, uh, to be involved in that and for people to trust you in that process, I think is really empowering and, and really rewarding. I think, um, you know, linking to the personal side as well, it's incredibly demanding what we do. Um, and at this time of year, we're, we're virtually working seven days a week. But you do have a little bit of flexibility as well. Um, and again, with young children now, it's nice to be able to occasionally work around your schedule with your family at times to, to sort of be involved. Where in a corporate world, that's not nearly as, as readily available to people. So look, it's very hard work. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot more hours than I was doing previously, but it's nice because you can pick and choose and, and flex where you need to. Yeah. And it is seven days. You, you work yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was running a podcast earlier who quit the nine to five and I thought at times there was a, mis a misconception around you work less, you work a lot more, but you do have flexibility during the day. You could go for a swim, Correct. get a break. Um, yeah. You could do something, you're not stuck in that office. Yeah, exactly. But it's hard work. It is, it is. It yeah. is hard work. And I mean, what are the key challenges? I mean, running a business, obviously there's challenges mm. and in real estate, it's, it is high demand. Have you found any key challenges that you've faced since running your business? Look, I think, um, look, r running a business, I think for any sort of small business owner is, ha always has challenges. And I think obviously for us, buying properties is, is the business, but behind that, there's a lot of other functions and activities that need to occur. So I think it's the balancing of the two. Um, because if you don't have sound business fundamentals in place in terms of your processes, your procedures, your, you know, finance, HR, you know, marketing, all of those sort of foundational uh, elements, your client facing stuff is going to suffer. Um, so I think it's important you've got both um, because without those solid foundations and even though some of them don't necessarily make you direct money, um, they're very, very important activities. So they're really, you know, critical to do. So I think that's probably the biggest challenge, sort of you've got to wear different hats at different times, but at all times sort of keeping your clients absolute top of mind. Yeah, and it's an ongoing process, right? Refining yeah. systems and procedures and Correct. optimizing. It's, 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 you're refining every month. Yeah, that's right, that's to right. To get it better. I drove past you, I, I saw last week in, in Potts Point and you looked like you were with some clients. Was, yeah. was that a client meeting? Or? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, we get out to quite a few coffee shops across Sydney. So we've got an office in Harness Hill in Bridge Street. Uh, but a lot of the time, yeah, we're, we're sort of out, out with people in the coffee shops. Nice. And what are you finding your... Why are you, are clients typically engaging you? Like, are they typically time poor? Are they expats? Are they sick of missing out? Is there any common themes? Oh, you well, you've just touched on a, a few of them, definitely. I think, look, with the way the market sort of shifted over the past four to five months in Sydney in particular, um, there's a lot of frustrated buyers out there. Mm. And um, I think a lot of people were sitting back trying to pick the bottom of the market. Well, that's that sort of happened and gone. Um, so that's certainly a big cohort of people. I think regardless of the market, there's always people that want to buy property and they just simply don't have the time or the expertise to, to sort of know what to do or how to do it. So I would say for us, we have sort of most of the people that come to us have probably had a bit of a journey already, yeah. you know, so I call it the Sydney property jungle, you know, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can get eaten or you can have a very long, lonely journey. Um, so that's sort of the, the, the first chunk. Of the, a lot of the referrals we get, which is 95% of our business, are people that have said, you know, you bought for my friend a couple of years ago, you know, we'd love it if we could have a chat and, you know, we pick it up fairly early in the piece, which is, which is nice. Yeah, it's incredible that 95% of your business is referral based. Mm, yeah. yeah. So do you find yourself, because I mean, typically when you receive a referral, the, the lead is, let's say, relatively warm or hot. Yes. Do you find yourself in meetings having to really go through value prop and potentially justify why? Because we, we charge a lot of money. We're not yep. cheap as buyers agents, mm -hmm. depending that we're charging what we should yeah. be. Yep. Do you find yourself having to... Look, I think clients are always looking for a return on investment, regardless of uh, you know what 
what you know what we're doing in life and I know I'm that like that personally so I think look clients have got to be comfortable that the value you're going to add um, and look it's hard because some of the value we add is quite intangible so what value do you put on a great relationship with the agents you know or that agent in particular it's quite intangible and even what we might save clients um, it's somewhat of a bit of a hypothetical but I think it's important that clients have a really clear roadmap in terms of how you run your process um, I think you should it's really important you should be able to show them a number of case studies of where you had added value and we always offer to clients look here's our last 10 or 20 buyers that we've bought, bought for this is their name this is the address this is their mobile please feel free to give them a call yeah. So I think when you offer that sort of level of integrity and transparency, it resonates with people. Um, and I think as well with, with buyer's agents, we're always competing against, even if it's not another buyer's agent, we're competing against the client doing it themselves. So they've got to see the value above and beyond them spending the next you know, 52 Saturdays out there on the beat of bringing you in. Yeah, and that leads into the next question. How many properties that you're purchasing are let's say off market versus on market or yeah look we definitely do do a, a fair bit of off market purchasing or pre-market purchasing and i think that probably changes on the market so i would say earlier this year when the market was not nearly as hot we were buying very little off market or, or pre-market because we simply didn't need to um, and there wasn't i guess that level of urgency in the market as the market has shifted up a couple of gears recently though, we are getting more aggressive with our buying strategies and, and certainly hunting those off markets and pre-markets a little earlier. Um, but yeah, it, it just shifts. And I think that's the thing with this industry, even in the, the sort of five or six years I've been buying professionally, the market has changed so many times and you've got to adapt and be nimble with it to ultimately give your clients the best results. Yeah, and I guess, I'm, I'm assuming the conversation you're having with your clients, let's say 16 months ago, is, was different now. Very different. Yeah, that's right. Like sort of pre-federal election, late last year, um, it was really, if we went for a property, we would, we would definitely get it. It was just how cheaply we could pick it up for. Um, now, it's actually about how do we secure this property before it actually runs away or above what we believe fair value to be. Yeah, so pre-election, you, I'm assuming you'd be like, let's go to auction? Correct, yeah, Pick exactly, let stuff. it run out, exactly. Let it run out and quite often we're buying at auction or if not, weeks after. Um, now, it's a lot more sort of pre-market, pre-auction. Yeah, and uh, investment versus owner rock? Like I would say our business is probably two thirds owner rock, one third investor. Okay. Um, so we're just exclusively based sort of in the blue ribbon parts of Sydney. Um, a lot of our clients will do both with us. We might do the family home and then start to build a portfolio. Um, but yeah, it, that obviously ebbs and flows over time as well. Do you guys do property management? We don't, no, we don't. We sort of just partner with select people in, in sort of the relevant parts of Sydney that we're buying. Um, so yeah, that's not something at this stage we're, we're doing. Okay, and the agents that have joined your firm, mm. did you find that they got up and running relatively quickly? Yeah, so what, what I did, I mean, that was probably, you know, a, a couple of years ago, was hitting sort of brick walls in terms of capacity, wanting to scaling the business. So I sort of have partnered with Paul, Paul Kavara out of McGrath. He's uh, sort of 20, 30 plus years in real estate. He's come on board and actually made the transition really, really well. Um, I think sales agent and buyer's agents, the skills are actually very, very similar. You know, we're essentially walking down the same path just on the, on the other side of the fence. Um, you've got to, you know, add value to clients, give them really good strategic advice and be able to execute, you know, and be a real subject matter expert. So he's made the transition really, really well, actually, um, and, and just killing it. Um, but yeah, I think it is not as easy as people probably think. I think people watch shows on, on TV and, and the like and think, oh, this will be great and people will just want to do this. But you've got to have the, the business fundamentals in place. But yeah, as I said earlier, also be able to actually genuinely add value to people. Otherwise, they're not going to want to partner with you. And where do you think, I mean, I remember when at Cohen Handler days, especially the earlier days when we were trying to articulate our value prop, yep. you know, like a client, why would I pay you a retainer? Why would I potentially pay you 2% of the purchase price? And yep. going back to adding value, I mean, do you feel, I mean, I'll rewind a lot. We used to have prospects or clients who would say, we want you to find something off market. And I'd be like, hold on, I think you're problem is you can't actually execute what's on the market correct you want off the market because you can't buy what's on yeah. let's fix the first problem yep let's try and nail what's on and then if something comes off and it's well priced and it's right let's 
attack that. I mean, where do you think as buyers agents, all of us are really, or should be adding the most value? Like, is it the negotiation, the source, like? Look, yeah, it's a, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of it is, yeah, just getting real with people early because there's a lot of buyers out there that are just spinning their wheels and they're not realistic. They don't even know what they want, mm. you know, which is why they've been looking for 18 months, 24 months. So I think the ability to refine a brief really tightly and, and re with a lot of clarity is a, is a really key value add that we can do. Um, I think definitely in that searching process, refining that, you know, yeah, sure the off markets, but even what is on market, really working through what's the, the good opportunities, what's overpriced, what's actually a bit left of center that they might not have considered and bring it to them. It's amazing how often we'll bring a property to a client, maybe one suburb out to where they were looking or something that was sitting on domain that they, you know, had been under their nose, but they hadn't even thought to you know, the potential of that property. So I think that's key. And obviously when it comes to the negotiation or, or auction bidding, whatever it might be, that's critical as well. Because clients want to know that they're not paying overs. I think that's a big part of the reason why people bring us on. And we have a lot of clients saying, look, we don't mind what you save us. Just don't let us get ripped off. Don't let us pay overs. And when we find the right one, just help us secure it. Yeah, it's interesting. Like negotiation's a big one. I think buyers forget which is why a lot of them don't use buyer's agents. I think it should be a lot more, uh, should be more prevalent is the real estate agent works against the buyer. Correct. Stop. They're legally yeah. obligated to get the vendor the highest price. Yep. And so they're professional negotiators acting on vendor side. Yeah. So a lot of buyers I think who don't negotiate a lot, they don't realize how much they could get rolled by trying to go up against a real estate agent by themselves. Yeah, and we see this a lot because we, we sort of socialize you know, and have really good relationships with a lot of the sales agents and we hear directly firsthand you know, buyers spending 100, 150, 200,000 more than the next buyer. Now, you know, as you said, absolutely, that's the right thing though. The agents are doing their job you know, and that's what I want agents to do when they're selling properties for me. Um, but I think that's the benefit of the buyer's agent in terms of being able to sort of A, give a proficient, sort of professional estimation around price and value, um, but equally give the best advice in terms of just actually that negotiation and, and buffering the emotion. Because as we know, sales agents love to play on that emotion and the fear of missing out. Um, so being able to do that, I think, and just keep clients in check. And sometimes that's give them a little bit of a nudge. Other times it's holding them back a bit, but just knowing sort of, you know, what to say, when to say, how to sort of act and execute. How often are you, communicating with your like average your clients is it daily yeah 40 uh, so 24 to 48 hours at a, at a, min a minimum is sort of what we operate to um yeah so i think that's really important that clients know what you're doing what we're seeing what we you know have ruled out um they need to know that you're on the on the job obviously you don't want to bombard them um, because that's kind of why they're offloading the process but yeah you, you need to let them know what you're up to and and you know it's very much a partnership um, and we say quite openly to clients, look, when we're sitting down for a briefing meeting um, or a get to know you session, they're interviewing us, but equally we're interviewing them as well, because there's got to be that fit. Um, and I always, in my opinion, it's a lot better to be clearer with that up front. And if there's not the fit, move on. Yes. You know, it's going to be the best thing for the client and the buyer's agent. But if there is the fit, absolutely take it further and, and see where you go. Nice. And if you have a client who, let's just say, they came to you with a, with a brief and you might have thought it was realistic at the time, but then you get out in the market and realise that, hey, we need to maybe reset expectations. Are you, are you pretty transparent? You call the you call the client and say, let's, let's meet and... Yeah, reach. definitely. Yeah, I think, look, you, you have to, and the, the market, look, especially at the moment, it's very fluid, it's moving very quickly. Um, but I, again, I think in sales agents, we'll talk about this in terms of listing right up front. Uh, and I think we need to do the same as buyers agents. There's no point promising to buy someone a $1.5 million terrace for 1.2 million. You know, it's just not gonna happen in this market. Um, so, you know, if, if you're going through recent sales with a, with a buyer at that sort of listing meeting, qualifying what's sold within their budget, and if they're saying, look, those sort of properties, yeah, they're ticking the boxes, great. You know, we're on the same page. Mm. But if they're not and saying, no, I wouldn't buy that, wouldn't buy that, wouldn't buy that, well, then there's a gap. There's an expectation in terms of budget and reality. Mm. Um, so I think you've really got to do that up front because it's a lot easier to do up front than do it 
you know, one, two, three months down the track. It becomes a nightmare. Yeah, exactly, because they'll come back to you and say, well, hold on, this was the same when we first sat down six weeks ago. Why are you changing the goalposts yeah. on me now? You know, look, potentially the market could be moving uber fast or, or something like that, but it's better just to calibrate and get on the same page um, because it just sets you up for a much sort of smoother journey and partnership ahead. What are plans for Mayfair moving forward? Are you looking to expand? Are you just going to keep? Look, I think at the moment it's probably just sort of consolidating where we are. We are looking at sort of bringing on potentially a couple of other buyers agents in the next six to 12 months. We don't want to be sort of massive and take over the world, but you know, we've got some, uh, I guess, good coverage at the moment, really good sort of market knowledge and, and re agent relationships. But um, yeah, we are sort of basically now running an attraction business where people are reaching out. Um, so we are sort of looking at just adding a couple of key people in, in certain pockets of Sydney moving forward. Yeah, awesome, mate. I really respect and admire what you've done and what you've created over five years. I mean, it's, it's not a long time to be in business mm. and for you to, to drive the business you're driving, you've grown your team, obviously it's looking to grow further. I just want to say well done. It's awesome to, to dive into your story. Thank you. I didn't know, you know your, your background and that you have even three kids, so mm. very nice. And guys, uh, we'll see you next uh, week on the new show. and. For, I guess people listening, where can they find you on your website? Mayfieldproperty.com.au or um, yeah, jump online, give us a buzz. Awesome, thank you.